This is a graceful watchman. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to run a virtual machine using Oracle's virtual box. The version I'm running is 5.1.8. We're using a different version. Don't worry about it. The process doesn't change much, if at all. Most of the updates are actually behind the scenes anyways and are not on the user interface. But say it's 10 years later, and the process has changed, this video may or may not be irrelevant. I really doubt it's going to change it that much where this video is relevant though. So whatever version you're running, you're pretty much safe. And this tutorial will help. Now let's get straight into it. Now these, these right here are past virtual machines I have already set up. I'll be showing you how to set up a new virtual machine. So you, the blue button right here that says new, click on that name your virtual machine whatever name you give it will show up as you can see with my past ones it'll show up like that so you probably just want to name the operating system that you're putting on the virtual machine and if you do that it will automatically show up so mine showed up Linux Mint and it automatically did Ubuntu because Linux Mint is based off Ubuntu. Your distribution might not be on here. So like Linux Mint is not on here. So just do whatever your distribution is based off of. If it's based off Arch Linux, do Arch Linux. If it's based off Debian, do Debian. Linux Mint is based off Ubuntu. So I'm going to do Ubuntu. If you're wondering, and another thing is, if it's not based off anything, just do other Linux. Simple as that. Like Solus, not based off anything. You can figure out what your distribution is based off of by going to distrowatcher.com, and it will say it there. Now I'm just going to do 32-bit, because 32-bit is all I have. Uh is all I have downloaded already so I didn't really want to download another one but you need to know what bit version your PC is if you have older PC hardware it's probably 32 bit now if you have 64 bit 32 bit will work on a 64 bit so if you don't know and you don't know how to find out which is easy to find out it's in your settings you're safe as going 32-bit and whatever operating system you download on the website of like Linux Mint when you download it you need to make sure it matches up so if you download Linux Mint 32-bit you need to click Ubuntu 32-bit simple as that right if you're wondering how to get 64-bit enabled you have to go to your BIOS to do that and I'll make a separate video on that and link it here but you have to go to your BIOS So let's continue. Click next. This is your RAM, your system memory. So I usually do about two gigs of RAM, just because I only have four gigs. But I usually give two gigs of RAM to this. Um, about you know a thousand megabytes is one gigabyte. If you didn't know, it's like a thousand twenty-four. But I usually do about two gigs of RAM. You know half. RAM I have it kind of makes sense to me but I usually do about two gigs but you probably want at least one gig at the minimum as it says here click next most of these options you can just leave it as so because they're set up for the average person to do it so you don't really need to mess with it much going to create just click next don't really need to mess with it now this means dynamically allocated will mean that as you use the virtual machine more it'll the size will continue to grow as you use it more and as it needs space so generally I do fixed size and I just give it 20 gigs but you can do dynamically allocated 
Um, that's what we'll do for this video. So just click next. And this is the limit, I believe. This is the limit on your dynamically allocated. So if you only wanted to use eight gigs and no more and stop there, then click it, you know. But we're just gonna give you 20 gigs just cause, I don't know, I kinda like 20 gig number. I don't know why. Seems like enough for anything. For a virtual machine at least. Create. All right, now as simple as that, we created it. Now when we click start, click the little icon here. If you're using Windows, it might look a little different, but it should be the same. Click the icon here. And go to wherever you downloaded your ISO <clears throat> in your files. Go to wherever it is. Mine's right here. It went to automatically. It's in my downloads. Click it and click open. and then you start up your virtual machine now if you're trying to do Ubuntu it from what I heard and from what I've tried Ubuntu has a lot of trouble for some reason on virtual machines I've never gotten Ubuntu to work on a virtual machine I don't know why I also tried Ubuntu Mate which is actually the system I'm running right now and I couldn't get it to work either so I don't know what's wrong with Ubuntu on virtual machines some people you do get it to work, I don't know how, but in the operating system right now is booting up. For some reason, when I was just starting out doing this, I was always having trouble because they're going through it and then they didn't show me that last step where you have to go to your where it's already created and then you have to go to your file and then click the file nobody actually showed me that or nobody explained that and I was like what how do you do it and this is running off a um, still image I didn't install Linux Mint but it's already running you can install it here if you're using another distribution it might not be you know that easy uh, it might go through a whole bunch of install phases or you're like it'll go through a whole process and then it'll ask if you want to install it Linux Mint just automatically boots up it lets you use it and then it will either let you use it like try it out or it'll ask you to install and then it'll go to the desktop but I'm already at the desktop and that's about it that's how you run a virtual machine when you close it you know if you want to save it you can save it now this is a state I usually shut it down if I'm gonna shut something down I'm gonna shut it down you know but if you want to save it you know whatever you're doing on the virtual machine that's that's pretty useful but just power it off and then when you use it again you can just automatically start it up you know it'll just boot up automatically thank you for watching the video and have a good day